Okay, so here's the uh, the weather forecast for where I'm going, and we're looking at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at Spruce Knob. Uh, again, as you can see, the uh, temperatures are going to be ranging on Tuesday between 41 and 45 with maybe some rain and clouds. Uh, not a big deal at all. Wednesday, uh, which is when I plan to summit, actually, unfortunately, it'll probably be very cloudy. Uh, we have rain expected, but something like 0.3 inches, according to this. High is actually up into the 50s at low elevation. Up onto the summit, uh, we're looking at temps in the 40s uh, with up to 35 mile per hour winds. Shouldn't be too bad. And then Thursday, which will be the last day, which actually, here's the... Uh, Here's the forecast at elevation, if you are interested in taking a look at that for the three days that I will be out there. Uh, Thursday, uh, it's going to get a little more gnarly, looking at like almost four inches of snow potential, so it might be a short day, just sort of hike out, get to the car, and get out while the roads are okay. Uh, temperatures going down to 12 degrees at elevation with 55, 60 mile per hour winds. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I don't plan on being up that high come midday Thursday. So hopefully it'll turn out well and we'll see what happens. Swallow Rock or Shallow Rock Trailhead parking lot at the Spruce Knob Seneca Rocks area in Monongahela here in West Virginia. Uh, drove in last night, got here about midnight, spent the night sleeping in the car and uh, just getting everything together and about to hit the trail. As you can see it's uh, nice and wet out there so it should be a, a toasty warm beautiful day went on and I have with me on this trip my trusty sidekick Jen who's all backlit and looking quite awkward in the passenger seat <laughs> and the packs and everything we used for sleeping last night are still piled in the back about to hoist those on and take off into the mountains Take a look up here at the map where we have the pretty little You Are Here sticker showing the Swallow Rock Trail. And we get to go across Seneca Creek, with it, which if it looks anything like the one behind us there, it's going to be an interesting situation. And then uh, as far as what we do once we get down in there, the original plan was to sort of move up the trail and hike some of the farther back parts, come out and then camp somewhere in the middle today, and then go up and climb up Spruce Knob tomorrow, and then come back down somewhere in the middle again and hike back out the day after. Uh, we'll see what ends up actually happening, and for now, time to walk. So that is this creek that we're supposed to walk across, and it didn't look favorable in that spot. So we uh, we found this tree down here. Ugh. 
We're going to aim for that and see if we can make our way across and meet back up with the trail. I've spent the last few trips with cold, soaking, wet feet, and I really would like to at least postpone that effect for a little bit this time. So, let's see what we get. It is gorgeous out here. So uh, we picked up these micro spikes uh, because I heard that there was snow and ice still at higher elevations here and as you just saw they, uh, they work really well on slippery trees and crossing that creek was great I mean the traction was amazing so at least I got to use them for something if we don't find any snow or ice higher up. Let's see if she makes it across as gracefully as I did. Everybody, a round of applause. She made it. Hooray! Do you feel like you're being watched? <laughs> awesome. Good job. It's gorgeous out here. But the, uh, trail for that last stretch was pretty much the creek. We've gotten off really easy so far with this nice flat easy trail. But uh, it's also my first time filming out in the woods so probably not going to do much for mileage today just sort of focusing on taking it easy enjoying the scenery and figuring out how to uh, try to entertain all of you people. This moss is amazing. Well, it's that uh, time to cross a creek again. That one, that creek right there. And as you can see right here, we just opted for taking our shoes and socks off. Uh, so again, I feel like trying to keep my feet some semblance of dry as long as possible this time uh, see how I feel after this exhilarating refreshing experience here we go let's see let's see how this goes for her and then it's my turn Yay, she survived! Now, uh, I can't talk to the camera on the waterproof case, but I'm gonna risk it and try to uh, fully capture the facial expressions that I make while traipsing through this without falling over, hopefully. Oh, yeah! I've done worse. I've done worse. Slippery rock. Oh god. Whew. <laughs> oh. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you do it. Oh god. That wasn't as bone chilling as I thought it would be. Not Says you. Bone chilling. I'm more fat than you. <laughs> this is true. There are creeks everywhere.
Say hi, Jen. Yeah, there's been a pretty steady uphill trudge. Not too steep, but, but some elevation gain nonetheless. And entered into this area with the ravines sort of all converging. And that snow on the hills with the mossy trees is just stunning. It's gorgeous out here. Also, I ended up putting the, uh, the micro spikes back on for this traversing of snowy meadow type area. It's all slick with mud. These things are amazing. As a matter of fact, I'm still <laughs> wearing them. Uh, trail is mostly mud at this point with some rocks and these things seem to just sort of cling to everything. It's wonderful. So, so far, so good. We've reached the junction <laughs> with the Allegheny Mountain Trail and White's Run and something else. You can see the old sign right here. It's, uh, that's apparently where they get rid of the old signs when they put these pretty new ones in. Look at that. It's gorgeous. It's even made out of, like, plastic. Prevent the rotting. But, uh... So now, we just have to decide if we want to go this way, or if we want to go that way, or if we want to go that way. Into the abyss. Decisions, decisions. This is Seneca Creek. We made it down here. Uh, my feet are about as wet as they could possibly be. Uh, I think Jen's Gore-Tex line boots actually may have trumped my shoes at the moment. Uh, but we'll see how she feels about them in a couple days. And my shoes are damp and hers are also damp. Anyway, now what we get to do is figure out how to get across this. I knew it was coming. But for some reason, I thought I'd get here and there'd be, like, a magical bridge or or something easier. Uh, anyway, onward we go. I'll let you know how it turns out. Well, I did it. Uh, it hurts, man. I'll tell you what, that water is cold. Ooh. And, uh... I didn't film it because uh, I wanted to be able to concentrate. Water's pretty uh, fast moving. Now, Jen is lucky enough to be filmed while she traverses the icy death stream called Seneca Creek in February. Here we go. Careful.
How'd you, how do you feel? Yes. Yeah, needly, needly pain. Yeah, sucks. Uh, so here's what we're gonna do. There's this nifty little campsite over here. We're gonna go sit in that little campsite and ring out, well, I'm gonna ring out my shoes. She's gonna dry off her feet, put on some dry socks, maybe eat a little food, chill out for a minute, and then keep on going. Uh, just got done having lunch. Now we're uh, drinking some coffee, getting a little bit of water, charging some stuff up here. <laughs> And uh, then I'm going to put on my freezing cold soaking wet shoes, get back on the trail, headed north up the Seneca Creek Trail to, uh, I don't know, we'll see where we end up. Well, as you can see, we're up on a hill in the fog. Uh, the path dictated that we again cross Seneca Creek, and we did not want to again cross Seneca Creek. So uh, it, it appears actually that other people before us today, or maybe yesterday, I'm not sure, uh, fresh footprints in the snow anyway, had the exact same thing. So we've been continuously crossing paths with them, uh, still off trail. I think according to the map, that the trail is supposed to cross the creek again and thus end up on this side where we can pick back up with it. Uh, but for now, we are bushwhacking through this gorgeous, foggy, ground cedar, moss, ferny, wonderful forest. It's, uh, it's beautiful out here. Feet are still cold and wet though. Otherwise, otherwise not bad. Not bad at all. This is Jen at a, uh, a much gentler creek crossing, but she she's taken the hard way. So uh, we think we found the Judy Springs Trail, and we're heading up to uh, to intercept one of the other trails and then get back to Seneca and find a place to camp. Uh, we might be on that trail. Oh wait, I found a blaze. They're not very well blazed, but there's one. First one we've seen in quite a while. But uh, there's this fence, this eerie fence, going into this smoky meadow. Uh, kind of creepy. It's, cool. it's awesome. And, and mushrooms. Look at that. Mushroom, mushroom. This is amazing. Look at this. This is meadow. It's probably a pretty cool view if, if we could see. But, I mean, this is this eerie and wonderful. Oh, and sometimes actually looking where I'm going might be important. trucking on. So where are my spikes actually? Uh, I've kind of fallen in love with these things. They're, they're great for pretty much everything so far. Um, <laughs> it seems like overkill I guess in some instances, but this, this muddy, this muddy stuff that I'm going through right now, it's great. They also lift me, what, three quarters of an inch or something up out of the snow, which keeps my feet nominally less cold wet 
Um, wow. And it has, and they have the added benefit, apparently, of uh, leaving tracks that look like some kind of frightening animal. So, yeah, look at this. <laughs> Grr, frightening animal tracks. <sighs> All right, up we go. It's been a lot of smooth elevation gain. Right up through here. I wanted to get some more footage of this beautiful meadow up here on the top of the hill. There's Jen. And I also wanted to commemorate this moment when it struck me, finally, to turn the annoying time and date stamp on the video recorder off for the first time. So from here on out, you won't have the big white numbers down at the bottom of the screen telling you what time it is and what day it is. You're welcome. Oh, trees again. Look at that. Surprise trees coming out of the fog. Creepy. Would you look at that? We were, in fact, on the correct trail, kind of. Uh, I'm not sure why this says Horton. I thought... <laughs> I was pretty sure that, according to the map, which I will now double-check, that this was supposed to intersect the Huckleberry Trail from where we were, and we're going to go back down towards Seneca in order to camp. Uh, oh, yeah, I guess maybe they renamed this part of the Huckleberry Trail the Horton Trail, because they do run into... They do... They are technically the same trail. After you cross the Allegheny trail on the other side of Seneca Creek. Uh, as you can see, the meadow has now given way to this beautiful, really creepy forest here. Uh, full of rocks and creepiness. Uh, so that way is where we'll be going tomorrow, up to the top of Spruce Knob. But today... We are going that way, back down into the abyss in order to eat dinner, make camp, and chill out with a, a special adult beverage, a nice warming campfire. Uh, on the bright side, my feet are warm now after all of the up. Mm -hmm. Done 2,552 feet of ascent. Uh, that's more than... I've ever done in a day, actually. I'm pretty sure that's more than Jen has done in a day, so hooray for new goals, and tomorrow it'll be even more. Shh, don't tell her. She's so excited. <laughs> She's a man of many words. Yeah, good one. guys look at this got some uh some mud going on here Ugh. this is some pretty gnarly stuff it's been a lot of downhill and tomorrow we get to go straight back up let's go to the top of spruce knob and then come back down again this is the great part and then uh puts around doing whatever we want um don't really have any plans other than that. Pretty cool. Anyway, look at this. It's just stunning. Beautiful. It's 
it's clearing up down at the lower elevations as well. And up in that meadow, we really had like 10 feet, 15 feet visibility. That fog it made for a cool effect. Hoping tomorrow we'll get some views up top. Maybe get up early enough in the morning <laughs> to uh, to beat the fog rising. Not that this isn't nice. It's still pretty amazing, but sweeping panoramas, man. That's it. That's what we're gonna get. We'll just wait all day. Camp at the top. Oh, good. And another creek crossing. At least this one has many easy ways. Like, right here. Like a f echo. <laughs> yep, she's gonna take the hard way. Ugh. See what she thinks after she gets a crest. She also has waterproof boots. Still the first day. I'm not losing my mind yet. Just taking my mind off the pain. What? I was excited. I knew we were coming here. Like, <laughs> how can I not be excited? The creek crossings build characters. So if you lose a toe, think about it. When you're like 50, 60, yeah. <laughs> and you're sitting in a bar, talking to somebody, and you're like, yeah, this one time, we went out on this winter backpacking trip, and we had to keep walking through these frigid waters. I mean, so cold, your skin basically just froze instantly. And while well, I lost a couple toes, you won't see it. And then you get laid. No, no, no. See, <laughs> if you did it when you were young and stupid. If you do it well, when no, you're you... supposed to be older and mature, uh, people just think you're an idiot. What? No, yeah. that's not true at all. That just means like, that you're you wise that? beyond your... Like, years. What, like 20 years ago, it's like, no, like last week. <laughs> what? Well, no, that just means you're wise enough to uh, understand that you should go out and lose toes rather than just growing old and dying. <laughs> Look at that. It's a creek. Seneca Creek. We're back. Now, uh, oh, if I don't kill myself, uh, I'm going to find a nice comfy spot to set up our hammocks. And we're going to go find a nice, comfy spot to eat some food. And then we're going to have a nightcap and get warm by a fire. And go to sleep. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> I, I don't think grabbing sticks on this side and tossing them over is really going really gonna to work in our favor. I can't hear you. Okay. Oh, why is there up? I was just confused about where we were. Oh, well, we're here. And we're going this way. I'm not... Maybe. I don't know. I was never good at stream fishing. So... I was under the impression that this trail would just drop us straight back down. And there would be like this wonderful flat sprawling area with like bridges and stone benches built and fire pits and stuff ready to go. And now we're going up. So <laughs> I have no clue what's happening or where we are. I guess we'll find out. Oh man, it's a good waterfall. Uh, well, the campground I wanted, uh, right across the street, or a creek, from this uh, really pretty 
big waterfall down here. Looks like we have to cross the creek again to get to it, which is not happening. Not in this universe. Uh, we know there's a bridge. There's a bridge right down there. A ways. So, yeah. Not, not a thing. Uh, but, yeah, this... So, we're just gonna wander down here and see what kind of spot we can find to camp. Uh, I totally missed the waterfall, but I'll get it in the morning when we go back through. The campsite that we wanted is actually right down there on the other side of that raging torrent of icy, cold water. Uh, there has to be something coming up, I would assume. What do you think it's going to do? Oh, you mean like that? Yeah. Oh. Well, <laughs> that does appear to... Oh, wait, no, it also goes to the right, so we have options. Oh. Yeah. All we need to do is find a place to camp. Oh, and it looks like, it looks like there might be campgrounds down there, so... Also, I don't know which way I'm pointing this camera. I might like, just look at the sky. Uh, and, uh, pretty good things. Um, I guess... I think we go down. Okay. And then uh, we will just walk right across the creek. <laughs> I mean, we'll go to the right here. It looked like there might be some campsites. I saw some flat rocks and stuff, so we'll... Uh, uh, head down that way, and we will hopefully make camp. Camp! Come! Wow. <laughs> Holy crap, that is gorgeous. Oh, this is just an amazing stretch. Uh... I have no idea. I don't know. The Falls of Dismal. It is not the Falls of Dismal. That's a that's a West Virginia. What? What? We should go back again. We should. Not right now, though. I know. That's a long walk. It's a secret. I haven't told them yet. Look. Rocks. I found big rocks. Yeah, that is actually pretty cool. But that's not actually the secret. We found our campsite. Uh, this is actually maybe even more awesome than the one that I originally thought we were going to go to. So it works out. It's just right down the creek. But uh, yeah. Home for the night. Somebody already built us chairs and big old fire ring and everything else. And uh, I feel like I feel like it doesn't get much better than this. I mean, look at that. And the view, the view coming up on that waterfall. Oh, it's right around there. Uh, we're gonna scope it out. Pretty exciting. Yeah. So fire. Lounging, uh, amazing view of waterfall and general gorgeousness everywhere. Oh man, this is great. Uh, getting firewood is going to be a pain, <laughs> but oh no, I think that's what's under the tarp actually. Yeah, that's cool, but for right now it's it's somewhat almost dryish firewood that somebody left, so we'll we'll definitely leave at least close to that much here. Uh yeah, that pretty cool. Hey, it's better than no wood. Alright. 
Well, time to start setting up camp. Okay, so, uh, getting some water. Yeah, yeah, you can get some. We'll need water for dinner anyway. So, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my tarp set up. Our tarp set up in this case. Uh, yeah, we'll do. This is my first time setting it up with this. So I have this uh, ridge line with the figure nines right there. And the idea is that I can just string this puppy up super quickly. Uh, it's going to be hard to do with one hand just because, well, one hand. But, <laughs> but the idea is that I can take this tarp and the snake skin. Oh, hey, there we go. Look, cameraman Jen. Awesome. And I can adjust my loop to give me the V of the size that I want. So, let's say I want it roughly, I don't know, out to here-ish. Again, first time doing this, so bear with me. Yeah, push it through, loop it around, and after this, I should be able to just leave it at this adjustment and not have to do this part anymore, so that's extra, but then I simply pull the thing around, get it nice and high up here, so I want it, loop it through, bring it under, Loop it through again, and I'll tie it off in a minute. Homemade snake skins, holding the tarp together. And then the other side, pull that puppy out, bring it around the tree, try to get it roughly even. And through here, where were we? Oh, wait. <laughs> My figure nine pointed the wrong way. Oh. I think it is. Will it work like that? I don't know. Let's find out. Pull it nice and tight, like so. I really should have spun that around the other way, but... Voila! And then here, I'm just gonna... Good enough. Then... Give it another good tug to get it tight. Move it around. Just gonna tie it through itself once. Ugh. Pull the snake skins off. And voila! The tarp is hung. So, uh, for reference, the correct way. This guy should be facing this way so that when you pull here, as you're tightening it, it will tension it and everything will stay nicely in line. They're going to ignore me slacking on the other side. And honestly, I'll probably just cut that out. So, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start getting this guy pitched up. All right, getting camp squared away here. Now I uh, probably need to loosen the V on the tarp a bit, but I've Hooked up my hammock suspension for the first time with whoopee slings and these uh, straps. They're just made out of some of the uh, climbing webbing that you can get at REI. And I did the, I believe it's what a bowline hitch, I believe is what it's called. Now with the stick. Hooked up the whoopee sling. You can see my uh, Z light in there. First time camping with a sleeping pad and a hammock. Uh, the other side is exactly the same. Funny story. Didn't get it on film, 
but uh, I had, I didn't pay attention when I set it up, and the the loop of the whoopee sling was actually over the stick instead of the knot, and so I get in the hammock to, uh, to test its load-bearing capability and fall flat on my within like two seconds. It was exhilarating. Uh, I have the tarp and just sort of a, a quick wind block, chill, stare at the fire mode for the time being. The fire. The awesome fire. Look at that fire. Oh yeah. But really, we're going to build a fire. Uh, we're also going to try putting both hammocks under the same tarp tonight. Let's see how well that works first time again. Alright. And soon dinner. Dinner. Alright, tonight for dinner. Pad Thai. Uh, first time eating a pre-prepared dehydrated meal. Uh, I've heard so many good things, I thought I'd try them, but honestly, like cost for calorie and weight for calorie, I'm, it's not super efficient, but I thought it'd be a cool treat. Uh, so we're gonna try it out, Pad Thai tonight, and a bunch of snacks, and a little bit of whiskey, and soon a fire. Awesome. Okay, so uh, so what we've got here is the beginnings of a fire, and one of my favorite things, the uh, lint with candle wax and petroleum jelly, so let's see if I make a fool out of myself, or if this baby actually goes up and burns like it should. Also, there's uh, some nice twine kindling going on in there. Uh, theoretically, this, uh, this wax should burn hot enough and long enough to get some of this stuff dry enough to catch on fire. That's the plan. We'll see what we get. So here, we have both hammocks strung up under the tarp. Uh, just tested laying in them. Probably show that when we actually do go to bed. Maybe. If it's dark, you wouldn't be able to see it well anyway. Take pictures or something, but uh, uh, it seems to work out pretty well. It's just like laying next to each other, only without the, uh, the effect we had when we both slept in the two-person hammock where we were squished on top of each other and couldn't move. So, uh, should be a nice comfy night. And the fire is trying. Kind of, kind of trying. It's, uh, everything is soaked. But the sun is coming out now. Up there. So I have a beautiful view. Awesome. So as you can see, we've, uh, been fighting with the fire. It's just been a fight. I'm start to finish I'm getting this thing going. And it's very sloppy right now, but... Like I said, it's been a pain. I just ate the Pad Thai, uh, either Mountain House or Backpacker's Pantry or whatever it was. It was delicious. This stuff is great. Ugh. In other news, we have about 1.9 ounces of denatured alcohol left. We're planning, I guess. Uh, so that's coffee in the morning and probably lunch. We'll probably have to actually make a cooking fire for dinner tomorrow night. So it goes, and then given the potential for freezing rain and snow and everything come Thursday morning, we may actually just camp close, pretty close to the parking lot so we can make a quick escape Thursday, so it's just not that big of a deal to not be able to cook in the morning then. Anyway, we're relaxing, finishing up the snacking and whatnot, getting everything squared away, getting ready to... Hang up the food bag, the hammocks all together, quilts and stuff going in, gonna fold that tarp down, close this in a little more against the wind and stuff. Fire's trying to come back to life. Cool. Oh, and blue skies, finally. Some blue coming in there. We might get to see stars tonight. Exciting.
seven in the morning. And rain <coughs> courage to go get the food bag to make coffee. Or try to talk Jen into getting it. <sighs> Still dry. Stayed kind of mostly warm. She didn't, apparently. We'll figure that out. Okay. Coffee time. Uh, got the food bag and uh, cooking up coffee here. Eventually I'm going to have to make her get out of bed and start packing up camp. Folded down the tarp last night before we retired so that as I knew it was going to rain and did a pretty good job. See how the two hammocks fit inside and our stuff down and thing. Mostly close up the other end as the wind was coming from that direction. It's uh, worked out nice. We're perfectly dry and coffee. That's the important part. Coffee. Uh, well, camp is all packed up, cleaned up, ready to go. Can't even tell we were here. I'm gonna walk over and look at this pretty little waterfall real quick. Uh, before we head out, it's pretty amazing. Uh, going all the way to the top of Spruce Knob today, and then. Probably gonna bail out early given the sogginess and go find another adventure to have on the way home since we have all day tomorrow to do whatever we want. Uh, wow. Well. Embrace the uphill, it says. Which is great, because that's what we're doing this morning. All uphill. Uh, it's much clearer today. I don't have the fog everywhere, so I'm hoping that I'll actually get some views up from the top. Uh, now I just have to figure out how I crossed this creek yesterday. Well, I think I did it over there. Ah. Just had a Cliff bar for breakfast. That was good. Yes, I did it from over here. It looked a bit less daunting on that side, I think. Mm. It was dangerous, by the way. Carrying the camera knot in its case while walking across water. Good ideas. Good ideas abound. Ta-da! Jen did it too. <sighs> Neither of us died. Pretty cool. All right, <sighs> up we go. All up. All the time. So, up. <laughs> it's definitely the order order of the day, and <clears throat> I'm gaining some elevation. Pretty much since the get-go now. Not moving very fast. We have Jen keeping up the rear, ready to catch me if I fall. But uh, she hasn't been out in quite a long while, and this is also about the most elevation gain that we'll have done in a trip. So just kind of poking along, taking it easy, so we don't kill our legs. Uh, Lots of mud. Mud and snow. Everywhere. It's beautiful. 
Well, now, uh, now it's giving way to rocks. This is, this is the trail. Rocks and water. Sort of like walking up a waterfall. It's a, and then still just a steady ascent. They're pretty nice about that actually, that the, the uphills here so far have been nice and gradual. So it's still taxing, but it's not, it's not like vertical ascents and miles of strenuous heaving. It's just sort of gentle slope. Oh, we've already come quite a ways. Back to the rocks and the water. Rocks and water. Ah, the field is still foggy. Well, we've uh, made it back to the trail junction where we came in on yesterday from the field. Uh, so now it's just right up that way to the top, up through the rocks to that nice cement pavilion up there. And then uh, we can take some pictures and selfies and smile and have a toast to the occasion. As I don't know if I've mentioned, but this will be my first time hiking above 4,000 feet, so I feel like it deserves some kind of commemoration, celebration. In the meantime, still mud. <laughs> mud and water. Lots of mud and water. Uh, let's see. Oh yeah, you can kind of make out the ridge line on the other side. Start to pick up too. Woohoo! There's the other side. All right, look at those rocks. More rocks. Rocks. Did I mention that this is beautiful? How's my hair? Great, I'm sure. Finally got to take the hat off, which is cool. I can see my head is breathing better. Oh man, and the trail has also has remained kind of wet, but it's gone to pretty much straight, straight up rocks, <laughs> which is neat. So gradual. So we've come to, yes, the uh, intersection of the Lumberjack Trail and the Horton Trail, which we were just on. Spruce Knob Tower to the right here. Five miles, apparently. That, sh that shouldn't be what that means, but I guess the GPS will tell us. Also a sock. Somebody was kind enough to leave a sock on the post, but... I thought, I was under the impression that the whole loop, parking at the tower and then hiking down and doing the High Meadows Trail and stuff, I thought that whole loop was like six miles, so maybe, maybe that is just like the number of the track. I don't know, but uh, we're going up, up we're going, up that way, into the abyss, ah, so much up. And we're now approaching the conif conifers. There's all this ice on the ground. And, uh, it's getting interesting. I think we're almost at the top of the ridge, and then just a straight, straight shot up the spine of this thing to get to Spruce Knob. How uh, fast that fog is blowing. Uh, Wow, but uh, definitely getting more interesting at this point. Ah, so beautiful.
Pardon the audio here, if it's usable enough for, for me to use it, or whatever. If I can use it at all, that uh, sounds like because it's in the weatherproof case, because it's just like misty and wet, rainy, and windy and crazy out here. So I didn't want to kill my camera. Oh my god. It's amazing. Amazing. Also snow. That's on where the trail goes. I found a campsite that was once... Uh, yeah, it was once a campsite. Oh, whew. That's getting deep. Oh, That's pretty. Uh, which way do you think? Okay. She thinks forward, so forward we go. Hmm. This is my first time in such an alpine place, I think. Maybe? I don't know. First time hiking to it, definitely, as an adult. Oh, there is a blaze! Ah. Blaze! Gotten to only damp. Now, ice. source that we're using because somebody me kept saying no we don't need to stop for water there's water everywhere <coughs> well now we're trying to stop for lunch but we can't cook because we have no water so here it goes we dip a cup into nasty mucky water more times. Get some nice brown colored water 
tastes all right. Filtered it, clogged up my filter pretty well. Clean that water. Anyway, still heading up to the summit. Well, I don't know if you can hear me, but we've uh, we've established that we're still probably three, four miles away and with uh, knee-deep snow and ice and water and all of that. Wind and rain and everything that's coming in. The sky's getting darker. We're both soaking wet and cold. And then we're actually gonna have to throw in the towel and fail this mission. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and take in some lunch and then head back down the mountain and try to make it out tonight. It's tomorrow. The weather report said it's supposed to be like in the teens and freezing rain and snow and we're just not <laughs> not prepared at the moment for that we are way wetter and colder than we should be as a stand so doing the smart thing eating lunch and hopefully going to make it back to the car tonight